shown fail close on a electrically driven valve such as shown here to show a motor much like um, you would use on a symbol for a, a, a rotating piece of equipment a lot of times motor actuated valves don't have a clear fail state because there's nothing that's uh, driving them to some fail state like a spring would drive a piston although you can get them with that a lot of times uh, when they fail it's unknown where where they're failing or where they're going to they may drift if you don't have a uh, feedback position monitor on them you don't know where they're at and so uh, the point here is to not get too much hung up on failure state of electric actuators but to just say when you don't know what the fail state of an actuated valve is, you would show it as indeterminate. Um, or the one last one is um, fail last position, which is sometimes shown, which is FLP. I'm not showing that here, but that would be a good case for a valve that wherever it failed, wherever it was when it when you lost control of it, it's probably still there. Um, that and fail indeterminate are are loosely connected. Uh, with the exception that um, I think that in, 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 the, in the fail uh, indeterminate, you simply have no idea where that valve's at in the field. There's no feedback from that valve on its position, and it's unknown where it's at, which is clearly not a good condition to be in. Um, on air actuated valves, uh, one important point that uh, throws folks new to symbology is this concept of uh, uh, in I to P. Uh, converters. Um, I think I talked about those on this side I didn't, in the last video. The so-called transducer. And a transducer is, is something that's commonly applied on air actuated diaphragm valves that are modulating instead of open closing. And in these cases the, the, the device receives an electric signal that tells it position the valve to 40 percent open and the valve is actuated by air so the transducer takes that electrical signal and trans and converts it to a equivalent air output to drive the valve to a desired position so that would be a current to pneumatic converter and it's shown by um, a symbol as we talked about in the last video locally mounted uh, built into the valve uh, actuator assembly and um, as such. The final valve symbol type is uh, very often used on instrument air and fluid systems where you have uh, generally less than half inch in size um, they're solenoid valves. Very common on hydraulic systems as well. So those control valves and valve symbol, valve body, um, we we can now go go on to the last couple sections on this lead sheet which are very self-evident and very uh, much to the discretion of the company that's developing lead sheets. Uh, some of these are nuances. The way I tend to draw P&Is are the, all the process piping and instrumentation, even though I show it here, is somewhat thicker for so-called major process lines than minor. It comes down to what's major and what's minor. Does it really matter? Can a person really see that one line on a P&I is thicker than another, especially when they're being copied and, and, and distributed multiple times over and the nuances of a major and minor line, unless it, the thickness is really exaggerated, become lost in the, um, in, the, in the ability of the printer or copier to resolve that or folks to see it. So most lines, um, like if I come over to typical P&I here, is uh, all shown with the same thickness, be they vent, uh, input uh, chemicals, um, or even uh, air supply. I, I'm showing pretty much all the lines associated with the P&I the same, although be advised that some companies show different services as different thicknesses. Um, the use of a dash line, I, I tend to use it for piping that's existing and um, it's helpful to show if you if you are making an add-on uh, to show existing piping is dash so that contractors and other engineers working on the project understand that um, 
that line is, is actually existing and you're tying into it. And, and incidentally, it's not to be confused with the use of dashed, like on this uh, example drawing for a package system. I, I tend to show package systems enclosed in dashed boundaries to illustrate that they are delivered entities that have a, uh, a clear connection points to which they can be integrated into the main process as a uh, discrete unit operation. So in this case here I'm talking about lines, not um, package systems. Electrical systems, dash lines, very common. Uh, they just tend to have a finer uh, dash sequence. Uh, capillary tubes, software we talked about it on the instrumentation. Um, it's, it, that's a very abstract uh, line, it, but simply it means I like to use it anywhere where there's a program that's running some code or, or performing some function that will result in uh, interpretation of input or uh, output. Uh, that's going on in software. You show that line and we show software lines throughout the example P&I's um, generally at the break of input and output. Once a signal is physically input into the control system and that processing is occurring inside the computer, you have software lines. Those software lines could represent thousands of lines of code. That, that's not important. The, the, the idea here is the P&ID is simply abstracting the point that something's going on, that, that input is being interpreted, it's resulting in indication of the data uh, or totalization of the information is um, in some sort of programming logic. Heading down the line of the line symbols, uh, lesser used in my projects, I say mine, uh, is the idea of a mechanical link. This would be clearly instead of a software link, an actual physical connection that's uh, providing some sort of link between devices. Um, the, the use of pneumatic signaling uh, or piping uh, with the double lines on an on a inclined basis is very common in instrument air systems. Uh, I use those a lot on, on valves and instrument air symbols. Uh, not to be confused with uh, the actual distribution of air throughout a plant where I tend to use the actual uh, just solid line. When it becomes in, used in a manner of running instrumentation, uh, then I switch over to this. And, and again, it's, it's a discretionary thing. The point is that uh, you're making a, uh, an indication that uh, that air symbol is driving instrumentation. Uh, you can have a hydraulic signals um, similar to instrumentation. Um, and then the last two are, um, are very commonly used to illustrate uh, mostly level or distance type instrumentation. Um, in the case of a uh, guided wave radar level element, you may show that that level instrument is working with a principle of sending uh, guided radar waves down a line and uh, they're guided in that they run on this, around the, uh, that antenna which is a physically dropped into the vessel. On the other hand, <clears throat> you might have um, unguided radar with a transmission horn, trans transceiver, that uh, pulses and receives the signal back through the headspace of the tank, or ultrasonic level, uh, which does the same, and it's unguided. It pulses and it's not guided, or it reflects off some physical boundary and comes back, and you may show that in that manner. I don't think I have any examples, but it's not hard to imagine where if, for example, level transmitter 1706 1 and 2 which are now shown as floats were unguided radar I might replace this whole assembly with just a simple horn and show these unguided symbols coming down which would help illustrate that that's a guided wave or unguided wave radar. Is it important from the standpoint of interpreting the pipe the P&I not really, because we're not really getting into what specific type of instrumentation are we trying to show. We're, we're really just more focused on the understanding the what is provided and how it interfaces with the plant at a high level on P&Is. 
um, if you if you want to get more details about your instrumentation you go to the tag and you pull the the instrument data sheet which uh, the instrument control guys should have or some cross-reference on a uh, equipment instrumentation list that will tell you what it is um, so that's the the symbol the simple uh, review of line types and valves and and while I just made the point that from a level standpoint it's not really critical to know what type of level element you're using whether that's radar or ultrasonic or um, some sort of capacitance or um, uh, uncoupled uh, magneto resistive I mean there's many types and really it, it's not critical that you know um, there are some accepted symbols to illustrate the type of flow elements that are used on various process pipes and and they're shown here as uh, well accepted in the industry as standard symbols um, whether they be uh, an orifice plate turbine or propeller type flow meter venturi uh, flow nozzle there's an ultrasonic some of these uh, transit time some of these uh, may may or may not be slightly adapted from standards uh, that are published um, it's just common in in my group that uh, if we see a square with a C in it which we use a lot of Coriolis mass flow meters um, we know it's a Coriolis versus a mag meter uh, rotometers are common PTOT tubes um, and then the others down the line so again if you look at a an application where you have a Coriolis flow meter okay it's a Coriolis flow meter how's that provide any help to the operator versus it being a mag meter maybe not a whole lot but uh, what is important is that this thing has specific gravity as flow uh, it's it's indicating on the HMI what the flow is the specific gravity of the fluid and it's totalizing through some secondary pulse input uh, how much is flown in the line so um, arguably you, it's it's not important to get hung up on the type of flow element although you should be aware of what it is when you see it um, because when you get into a a process review uh, and you're and you're talking about operability concerns um, somebody may raise the point that a particular type of device does not function well in a, in a certain condition an example of that may be uh, where you have an ultrasonic device or a transit time device flow meter where a lot of solids may be present in the line then you have a situation where the transit time will not perform well that could lead to some uh, improper readings and uh, it could cascade some operability or safety concerns so I don't want to say categorically it's not important to know what kind of device is in, in a process but oftentimes it's not clearly shown on the level side what type is, is is installed so it's important that you know when you show up at reviews that and you've worked with plants what the limitations are if uh, they affect the performance of the system so but we're focusing on P&I's here so let's not get too too wrapped up into that um, and I think that completes a series on the first lead sheet uh, again go back through the actual posted series where on uh, some cases here where I've glossed over things I, I talk about them in a little more detail but not so much as to completely consume their their server storage space because <laughs> I was writing some tombs there and trying to keep it focused and yet broad at the same time which is a paradox in, in terms of understanding your your audience but uh, the next uh, video we're gonna break out the second lead sheet and we're gonna go over that in a similar manner and then uh, and then later on I will try to provide some physical pictures of how all this stuff is uh, actually relates to the real world so thanks a lot folks and uh, stay tuned for the next one